Hello, everyone. Welcome to Harmonic Heart. We're a music blog dedicated to showcasing musicians' stories and talent. I'm your host, Chris Millette. Today on the show, we have a legend, an HBCU DJ of the year. Without a doubt, if he's the DJ at the party, you rest in confidence, knowing the function will be bumping. When you look up Howard University party in the dictionary, this man's name and face comes up. I'm honored to have on the show the legendary, committed to legacy, my big homie in life and the music game, DJ Chubby Swag. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was actually a great intro and it <laughs> made me remember I didn't send you a bio, so I feel terrible about that. So I owe you one. Cool. Owe you one. I owe you some, <laughs> uh, some Dinos. I don't know how when the last Ooh, time you got hey. some Dinos. But... It's been too long. <laughs> yeah, I owe, you, I owe you some Dinos. Let's, right. let's get it on, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having this platform for artists, for musicians for people in the industry that are often either overlooked or don't get a chance to voice their voice mm -hmm. or express their voice. So thank you for having me and I'm glad to be here. Mm, exactly. You know, and of course, grateful and honored to have you. And that's, you know, an interesting point. Um, harmonic heart, it's, it's a layered meaning. One of the kind of most underlying kind of core meanings to it, there's this ancient Egyptian um, concept of ma'at <laughs> and it's about divine order and yeah, talk about it yeah so to your point just people not that you know for you but just overall in general there are certain people that aren't that are overlooked and just not given certain opportunities to have their voices heard so that's a, a big part of the mission of this platform yeah very much so mm -hmm. um, I also appreciate the fact that you you've looked at it from a service background. Mm, right. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and as we're getting started, I do encourage everyone to watch the In The Mix documentary directed by DJ Magic about the recent history of Howard DJs about the, you know, past 20 years. And I think it frames nicely the legacy of Howard DJs. And it also highlights, one of the main highlights is showing your integral role in creating this sense of collaboration and mentorship among the Howard DJs. Yeah. Yeah, big shout out to DJ Magic. Um, I I felt like I kind of pressured her into doing it, but what I pressured her into doing, she took and made 10,000 times what I thought she was going to, well, what I thought anybody was going to do with it, not even just her. So mm -hmm. big shout out to her. She's She understands that she's the inspiration for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. uh, inspiration goes both ways. It, 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 it always isn't top down. Sometimes mm. it's bottom up. Mm. And when you're doing music and you're doing art and you're doing creative expression, you have to stay motivated. And she's one of the people that motivates me every single day. Mm. Producer, musician, engineer, computer technician, she can literally do it all. And she has her degrees to prove it. So wow. big shout out to DJ Magic. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, man. Um, it seems, yeah, just very well done and just all the DJs that are mentioned in it. And, you know, it educated, you know, people like me that aren't aware of, you know, that legacy too. So um, yeah. I was, um, I was happy to finally get the Howard pedigree and the tradition uh, into the mainstream. In addition to showing how serious we are now as working professionals, mm. we pretty much come into the situation and we train up but as soon as you're able to really work you're able to do so and we find a way to not only facilitate that but also encourage and to like i say collaborate and add some mentorship mm. navigate you know figure out the pipeline djing is so different than everything else because a lot of people really don't know what to do it's the blind leading the blind Mm -hmm. We try to help people develop as many options as possible for them to succeed. Well, well, um, yeah. And what are some of those, you know, avenues that you do that through? If you want to, you know, shout those out real quick. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, the the basis of the organization, the Howard University DJ organization, is to support young student DJs with alumni who have. DJ or been in the DJing or DJ support space who are working or working in the DJ space 
for mentorship, motivation, and alignment. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't always take for you to be a DJ after you graduate for you to help a DJ that's currently doing something. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of DJs that have graduated that are in real estate, mm -hmm. production, corporate world, everything, textiles, mm -hmm. fashion. Uh -huh. I can, uh, one of the DJs that went to Howard Back in the day, she directed the Beyonce and Jay-Z video for Ape Shit. Oh, crazy. Wow. Oh, the, wow. The, the legacy extends wide, not only through the different cultures and the influx of communities that come to Howard, but also up. It isn't a lower level mobile wedding party type thing. No, like... <laughs> We, we have people that DJ for Obama. We have people that have their own uh, record labels just off the fact that they used to be deep made. So mm -hmm. it's important. It's mm -hmm. important. We, we mm -hmm. wanted to connect it all together. I really want to do a part two where we go 20 years before the last 20 years mm -hmm. and we talk about the people who play the real demonstration in the 80s and 90s in early 2000s that were the catalyst for us succeeding later on mm. oh yeah that sounds awesome yeah i was actually yeah thinking about those 20 years prior actually so that's interesting you say that yeah you know let's Very uh much so i mm -hmm. i be go ahead i'm sorry my, my, oh no no go ahead finish yeah mm -hmm. oh i was just saying because of the influx of hip-hop and then also the rise of the DJ as a role and title. Those years, along with everything that was happening at Howard at the time, the influx of the music industry professionals mm -hmm. and artists. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's that's where I really want to go next with it. I really mm -hmm. want to connect both communities so that we can feed off of each other so that when the pandemic is over, we can go forward as one of the first formal DJ organizations mm. at an HBCU oh, wow. that focuses on that equity for the black DJ. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And let's, let's take it back to, you know, your early years and, you know, you're from LA Inglewood, you know, <laughs> I'm from Gardena, you know, tell me about those early years when you yeah. were first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I like, I like these interviews, especially this one in particular, because I actually happen to know you, right. so I can I can surprise the crowd with some stuff they might know about night and I know about you. But <laughs> we also get to learn a little bit more about each other mm, uh, okay. along the way, which is cool. Yeah. Um, Gardena, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Similar to Inglewood, not as rough, not mm -hmm. as rough. Right, right. You don't you don't get as much credit being close to Compton, but right, you guys right. have your own games, you know. Got your it's, own Yeah. You got your own game. <laughs> um, it's yeah. It's funny, yeah. I went to preschool in Compton actually, so that's my little Yeah, 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 yeah. And look, and he, people people who have who have probably met you would have never would have never guessed that. You right, know? So, right. Yeah. Layers, layers. Layer. Yeah. I'm deviating. Let me get back back to it. I'm originally from Inglewood. We moved to Ladera when I was about six, but all of my roots and origins still align either to Inglewood or to the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So when I was born, I was born in Inglewood. Well, born in Harbor City, but we lived right, in Inglewood. Right. The Kaiser was in Harbor City, but yeah, right. we lived in Inglewood. I was born there too. We were supposed <laughs> to go to church that day, and then, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a fact though. I ended up coming out and uh my world is a little tumultuous at, at the beginning um I'm filled with a lot of love but i lose my brother when i'm four. Oh my gosh man. and then i i'm kind of hindered from seeing my other brother because they were both a little involved in gangs so mm -hmm. that's the reason why we moved primarily from inglewood to ladera after mm -hmm. after he passed mm -hmm. right after he left though we ended up enrolling me into formal piano lessons oh, so i pretty oh. much got to, got to start when i was five or six yeah from then i ascended pretty quickly um not only being good at piano but also being good at math 
So mm-hmm. I was able to make a lot happen in a short amount of time to the point where they were like, you're not being challenged. We need you to do this, this, and that. So mm-hmm. I was in those uh, spotlight awards and all that other stuff and the mm-hmm. competition and stuff at uh, uh, radio, the co- Disney hall downtown and everything else. So wow. yeah, I used to do all that stuff. And mm-hmm. then I, it was weird being in Inglewood and also doing, you know, primarily classical and jazz. Mm, mm, because I was mm. starting to grow into my own person and always having friends from these areas, it would be difficult to straddle the line. I, I often had difficulty understanding who I really was just because we were made to think that oh, you have to be this or you have to be that. I didn't understand layers yet. Right, right. So going to high school and then going to college was important for that because it, it, it could be, yes, I, I am from Inglewood, but yes, I, you know, I did go to Loyola. Right, right, yeah. So yes, I do play piano, but yes, I did fight every day in middle school. Like, mm. <laughs> so there, there's, there's parallels there. And then I, it also, again, juxtaposes the being from LA part. So when you're from LA, you, you, you have these, these different idiosyncrasies that are layers for us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so from middle school and the high school, I pretty much upgrade from piano only into piano theory. Mm-hmm. And also I start playing percussion. So oh. bass drum, timpani marimba xylophone uh vibraphone glockenspiel mm, wow. anything <laughs> with the <a> mallet <laughs> <Boom. laughs> yeah because oh, like first met, mallet. right 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 <laughs> for sure for sure cool. yeah <laughs> yeah, so, yeah I, I was i was good with the mallets i gotta go dig yeah. those you know what you gotta go go to loyola you can dig those up they should have yeah. it but i was an orchestra I was Man. Jazz, so band, then... jazz band was kind of like weak at the time no mm-hmm. respect, but it wasn't <laughs> it was kind of just it was amateur hour they mm-hmm. were my friends don't get me wrong but mm-hmm. it wasn't i think it was just because it wasn't a lot of people mm-hmm. that that might have been it. it wasn't a lot of people mm-hmm. um but i i had love for them i had love for everybody when i was in high school just the same way when I was in college, I just wanted to get to know people. I mm, felt nice. sheltered, you know. Mm, so mm-hmm. I was just like, I want friends. Yeah. I want, I want to meet people. I want to know people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I go to Loyola and I'm good with computers, good with music, good with meeting people, being social. And mm-hmm. towards the end, I am the manager of the basketball team. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'm playing music before every game. Little oh, Brock, wow. DJ Bug. Mm, wow, interesting. Two very good friends of mine at the time were DJs. Mm-hmm. Richard Washington mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and Kenneth Wilson. Kenny is mm-hmm. still a DJ. Hey. He DJs in LA. His name is DJ Kenway. And he, mm-hmm. he named himself after the street that we used to throw parties on. Oh wow! Nice, nice. I like that. I told him back in the day. I was like, "You should have named yourself Kennedy, but he don't listen." Ooh, man, that's nice. That's smooth. He don't listen. He don't listen. He had that sponsor. Right. <laughs> True. Gotcha. So, um, high school. Uh, do orchestra. Um, leaving high school, I'm kind of getting rebellious. I'm I'm feeling real. I'm feeling real real itchy. Mm-hmm. So, um, I get it, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Lo- Loyola was a great experience, but it, it's also really eye opening if you're black. Right, right, for sure. So, um, luckily, I I was snapping out of it very quickly, mm-hmm. and I was kind of like rebellious. So, I going to Howard was kind of like out of left field for me. Mm-hmm. Really, like I my top three were. Berkeley, mm-hmm. yeah. Dartmouth, mm-hmm. and I want to say my safety school was like Santa Clara, 
Mm, right right yeah Mm -hmm. i got in the riverside i got into merced because merced was new merced was like a brand new school i probably wouldn't even get it Uh, true (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was a brand new school and i Mm -hmm. i got in all my all my all the black schools i applied to i got in Mm -hmm. i actually was scheduled to get some money i just wasn't to me i was still caught up on this old proximity to whiteness where i thought Mm -hmm. that oh i have to go to a a certain type of school and get a certain Mm -hmm. job get a certain Mm-hmm. that was out of the window after being here a week so <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. god bless howard and mm-hmm. i came here and immediately i had the bug i was like the itch is being scratched but mm-hmm. i it's i i want more what mm-hmm. am i gonna do with this bug where where am i gonna take this whatever this is or wherever i am in life where does it go for me so mm-hmm. in the first week i was like man i gotta do something different let me try something out mm-hmm. so i started hosting parties mm-hmm. underground stuff stuff around campus stuff at clubs wherever i can get in and i was like a promoter too i used to promote parties of love oh my god oh man wow, <laughs> yeah. wow. so mm-hmm. that's like 13 years ago Woo! man gosh um <laughs> But yeah, so I was promoting stuff at Love, and then afterward, I just felt like it wasn't doing much for me internally, and I felt like I needed to do more. There's always more. I I wasn't feeling value. Mm -hmm. So I started throwing the parties, and then when you throw the parties yourself, like, it's cool, you make a little money, or you get some people around you, but Mm -hmm. what's going to happen with the music, or what's going to happen with the people? Like, so... Mm, I threw the yeah, party yeah. and mm-hmm. I had to DJ the party. Wow, so wow. people just thought like I was crazy, I was brave, I was innovative, I was reckless, I was getting it from all angles, but I was getting it. So were you um Terrell at this point? You know, you're just was you were you just throwing it like Terrell's party or like what was what was no, it under I, type of I was <laughs> I was Chubby Swag from day one. Oh wow. Okay. Day one. I wow. got the name. When I was on the booty wall, <laughs> Howard, if you, if you, if you, this is one yeah. of the IYKYK moments. If you, know, if you know. yeah, right. But I was on the booty wall, and I was on the booty wall on the right day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a life, yeah, life changing moment on the booty wall. I, I caught my name. I caught my name. That's probably the first time somebody called O'Shea Ice Cube. You feel me? Like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's me. That's me. That's me. Plus yeah, my so yeah, mm-hmm. they, they right. said they were like, Yeah, you got that chubby swag. And I was like, mm-hmm. Maybe I do. <laughs> Maybe. I, I had never been little. I was never thin. I'd never been proportionate even. I always had a mm-hmm. weird chubby type size. So for mm-hmm. me, it it was all encompassing of someone who was going to make it despite not being not fitting the look, mm-hmm. not it not fitting. The, it was supposed to be the square peg in the round hole. Mm-hmm. You and, and you're like leaning into who you are early on. Yeah, very much so. Some people are disruptors, and that's me. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let I them know. Disruptor. Talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> big, big stepper. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, wow. Um, interesting yeah it sounds like a a really kind of gradual process yeah yeah it um i'm lucky to 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 be able to have so much clarity in retrospect Mm -hmm. um i think it's probably because i bumped my head so many times but Mm -hmm. you know that comes with the game that really comes with the territory Mm -hmm. and i hope i can continue failing upward Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Fail down, you kind of want to fail up. So, mm-hmm. I hope you're failing up. Hmm. For sure, man. You know, I think in the yeah, in the documentary, you mentioned something interesting of you know your cousin talking about yeah, you know you're gonna choose between being a producer or a, a DJ, and um, yeah, things like yeah, I can see you know with that early music background and with piano theory and. Um, and look the cold part is i chose production first interesting interesting I chose production first my mother was so annoyed at me because i had a beat i made on my voicemail probably mm. for 18 months 
Oh, really? Yeah. And she hated it. Oh. Hated it. Like, I thought the beat was so fly. Like, my mm. friend thought it was cool. Like, my cousin was like, he was bigging me up. He was like, man, you made your first little beat, huh? And like, right, right. You know? <laughs> my mother hated it. She was like, I hate when I call you and I hear that, that crap in the background. I just want to leave a message. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I chose production first and I was very comfortable with it but I didn't have the time and or the it wasn't easy then like I was using an MPC and some other stuff like mm -hmm. this is really when you have to combine different things in your mm -hmm. setup it, mm -hmm. like Fruity Loops was out but it wasn't as advanced as it was now right. Pro, like Logic and Pro Tools and all that stuff mm -hmm. was all in its it's remedial stages. It's mm -hmm. infant, infant stages. Right. So for me, like I was learning real, actual hip hop production, like thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Playing something <laughs> over here, doing the sequence of the beat, mm -hmm. doing this Crazy. over here, doing your right. voice stuff over here, mm -hmm. like. True. So yeah, I really chose production first, but it ended up helping me later on in DJing combined with the music stuff because I know how to read. Four, mm -hmm. four, four, four measure. I know where the beat's supposed to come in. I, mm -hmm. I understand uh, a downbeat or a situation where it's coming in a bar early or a bar late, two bars late, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you were talking about, yeah, your love of math too, and that, you know, all related in there. Gosh. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to bring it up later, but, you know, yeah, I was thinking, well, you know, so, you know, that's a great point, you know, with like sampling and like the NPC and it's just so much easier. You could do everything like on the computer now at this point. Um, and you were getting this bug, you know, being in like Loyola playing the music beforehand and then Howard <laughs> being around blackness and the epitome of taste and, and culture and yeah. um, feeling the vibe <laughs> of the crowd and just that that bug that got you growing more and more yeah howard and loyola back to back was really like it's hard to describe it's really hard to describe it's really the best of the best twice over yeah yeah that's a good that's a good way of talking about it yeah and and it's it's balanced because it's like okay i i did it the white man's way Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hate to say it like that, but I did it the white man's way. Right, right. And, and now I could do it my way. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, because there is this. Some people don't have that experience, like we had a Loyola. So, and it's really it's almost like on some like college level type caliber type of stuff as well. Yeah, so. no, it it's really competition. The my class valedictorian is a senator now crazy yeah and not and not a nice one like a mean republican senator oh yeah mm. you know i remember when he used to just get good grades and smell bad <laughs> so it's it was always competitive it was always yeah, competitive. It like, is, yeah. I, I would i was in class with 4.3 starting quarterback mm -hmm. like singers and it was oh, just yeah. like where do we, you really you really hustle to figure out where do i fit in mm -hmm. how, how do i make myself valuable how do i get over because i can't let them win <laughs> yeah I'm yeah sorry. i can't mm -hmm. let them win right right mm -hmm. yeah i'm sorry C continue your questions bro i know I'm, I'm being loquacious no no this is great and you know we're related obviously you know because i you know i went to loyola and it's myself. interesting and you know also in the documentary in the mix it brings up you bring up like you know a good point and also you touched on it here as well of Howard being a little left field you know on the west coast we don't really have HBCUs you know we don't have them at all mm -hmm. right Calif so well California in general the only HBCU we have is a is a well in in LA the only HBCU we have is a uh medical school charles drew. right charles drew yeah mm -hmm. you're right and it it's um so 
you know Loyola's website is it's like a college and especially at that time Howard's website was like not it and I I didn't know like what Howard would even be like and I literally chose Howard because of welcome to Howard 101 wow (laughs) of course like the there was the legacy and all that but it's like I'm I have not visited this school what is it going to be like when I actually go there? And and the funny the funny thing about that is, you're not the only that that video that all of that is so famous, right? It's famous, like it's really famous. Like Jay Murphy is an actual celebrity mm-hmm. from those tapes. A lot of other stuff he was doing at the time, but he's forever cemented in a legacy in a time period because he was the forward facing person at the time. Mm-hmm. I feel like those videos got to be in the tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands at this point, but chase B too. I'm in a couple, I'm like in probably one or two videos, but yeah, man, that I re- I remember being on campus when that stuff was going on. And that was like my happiest time because it was so collaborative. Like, so the person who did that, um, the people who were responsible for that video is called H U Reaction, mm-hmm. and it was Antoine and Omar really who were the main people behind it, and the person who shot it was was Justin Dean, mm-hmm. aka Swag Boy, mm-hmm. but man, like they cared about it, and then we cared about it, so because we all cared about it, it worked out well. Like, later on, like, the money situation kind of, you know, everybody had to go figure out what they were going to do with life, rent is due. Mm, But at the time when, you know, everybody could just go back to their dorm or they had their little equipment and they had their hustle and they had their motivation, boy, we put out some classics. We put Mm. out some, like, some, oh, my God. It's, yeah, it's, it's so impactful. Gosh. It was the it was the blueprint. It was the blueprint. It was really the blueprint. It was the blueprint of how to how to approach this this HBCU entertainment at large in mass across the board. So mm-hmm. yeah. shout out and shout out to them. Shout out to everybody involved with all that stuff. I I can't remember everybody's name offhand, but big shouts out to Justin Dean because he really had the 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 work ethic to film and do all that and shout out to Omar and Antoine for having that foresight Mm -hmm. premonition like having that real because I knew a little bit back then because I was just kind of like I was always for documentation type projects and fun stuff but they really preserved it and edited it in a way that makes it undeniable even Mm -hmm. now you can watch it now and it's 10 years old Wow, crazy right, right 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 yeah at least you yeah. can watch, <laughs> watch it now like wow like you know so yeah they really yeah preserved and you know just captured you know the howard experience yeah crazy um you know i think and you know th- talk to me about i'm gonna bring you know this up and this was also a little bit before me, of course, I don't think I really get the grand scope of it, but, you know, talk to me about, you know, the twerk tapes. Oh, cool. Uh, it was kind of before you. You kind of, what was your freshman year, 14, 15? It was 15. So, you know, I was like aware of it. You know, I think there were probably, you know, other iterations and things. And, you know, I was hearing about it and heard, you know, them. <laughs> And I was obviously heard, you know, year mixes at parties and things. But I think in terms of, you know, it seems like kind of their overall impact as well. Yeah. The legacy comes from trying to reach the people where they were at, trying to compete with other DJs, trying to innovate as a DJ myself, and trying to fit a new movement into the lexicon so twerking was always popular it was always the the peak the hype whenever your party is going the best that absolutely can go whenever your function is as the kids say bussing 
there's twerking going on. You know, mm-hmm. things are cooling off later. You get that really nice slow part and everything else, but the the rising action is the twerking. Mm-hmm. So right, right, I'm yeah. going to make party like a party to go, party in a box with all twerking for it started for me with our students and then after that it was hbcu students and then after that it was black people and after mm-hmm. that it was all people mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. over time you can kind of you can kind of see and hear the progression like me adding in international music me adding in newer artists i just did one that's all women right right so it, and there's definitely space for it to to grow and it comes from a place that actually encourages the appreciation of women. It's not something that demeans or hurts. Mm-hmm. It's really a lot of people, especially women, have told me like they use it mostly to work out or do things in their home alone or to mm-hmm. feel sexy by themselves. And mm-hmm. I love that. I right. love that. I love that. I absolutely love that. And that's what mm-hmm. it's for. Mm-hmm. It's like a big thank you card or a big thank you note. I mean, I've, I've never sold it. I've never sold one of those tapes ever. Wow. And I've broken so many artists from there, like mm. so much visibility. And then we, we throw the party all the time, year in, year out, no matter what. I really want to do a show. The plan for me right now is to finish the little 10 mixtape legacy, mm-hmm. pass it on to somebody else. Mm. Or, you know, start getting other people to do them. But I also want to do a show on Twitch, like, every Thursday where I do just tw- straight twerking music. Hey, hey. <laughs> so that's the, that's really the, that's really the, the crux of it. Mm-hmm. I was lucky to have Chase B in the beginning, but... Um, I've adjusted to doing it solo, or if I need to have a partner, I can do it with a partner. Mm-hmm. I need mm-hmm. it to help make other people's careers, if not better, more visible. Mm-hmm. Um, the same thing I do with the party as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, it, the twerk tape is serious to me. It's very serious. I've, I've kept, I've held on to it for damn near a decade, so. Mm-hmm. it's my it's probably my biggest brand my biggest draw mm-hmm. it gives me the ability to have fun and project fun mm-hmm. and project the right amount of crazy the right amount of recklessness the right around the right amount of border crossing boundary crossing that doesn't get anybody hurt mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I want the highest level of fun possible. <laughs> um, let me see. And yeah, I totally get what you mean about, um, you know, it being respectful as well and um, an affirming place, you know, and I relate to that as well, even with, you know, some music that I put out. And um, it's, I think, is it Brandon Harris? He was like the co os or like the, the yeah. president or something. Yeah. He mentioned, oh, like, uh, he tweeted like, oh, like some, what did he say? Like about like this crossover between like turning up and social justice type of thing. Oh, yeah. The, the latest uh, twerk tape nine with the women. Yeah. <laughs> and that's perfect because he's, that's really actually my, 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 my best friend. Uh. <laughs> uh, in between him, Evan, Duran, the other Brandon, the other Brandon, like, mm-hmm. The, the people that really know me, those are my really good friends. And Brandon is a really, really good friend, a close friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And he has a way of, I, I've always considered myself good with words, but he's great with words. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he, he pretty much addressed it as the way of turning up and turning on your social consciousness. Mm-hmm. Like everything doesn't have to be destructive. Mm-hmm. Even if you're rapping about crime, even if you're rapping about murder, even if you're rapping about prostitution anything even if you're rapping about a grilled cheese sandwich it can be fun educational Mm -hmm. building productive Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know constructive right yeah too often too too many things are destructive too Mm -hmm. often we have to diminish others to make our candle wick flame shine brighter and 
when you when you share power, you can just dip two candles together and mm. they'll mm. both lit. Ah, uh, true, <laughs> true. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. And I'm tripping about you know the timelines. Yeah, I mean, I I graduated in 2015. I started in like 2011. Oh, boom! So look, <laughs> all right, perfect. Okay, so look, look, look. You were you actually got lucky. I did your freshman week. Right, right, literally. <laughs> yes. Your freshman week, I did your very first homecoming. Yeah, right, right. I want to say that was Jeezy. Maybe. I know, like, Big Sean was there, like, at least two years in a row type of thing. Yes, Sean, Sean Dom was there. Uh-huh. You, definitely, you definitely had your, your Wale appearances. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I want to say that was the last year we threw... The last year we threw Midnight Madness too. Mm, that sounds familiar. That's why. That's why my intro is like literally because like I you know coming from Loyola me, <laughs> and then it's I'm walking around you know, and Loyola's an all boys school. So <laughs> yeah, like, very much so, and it's very deceiving too because it it you you're thrusted from like an all testosterone environment <laughs> to pretty much an all girls school. Literally, guys there sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember being in classes where I was the only guy or I was For one sure. of the odd guys mm-hmm. and right. I've never felt more comfortable in my life mm-hmm. or never felt right, more right. Comfortable. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. and it was just interesting because I remember well one like the first like three months like I'd see like a beautiful woman and I'd like under my breath go like and I thought no one could hear me. And my best friend was like, Chris, whenever you see someone you like, you're like, wow. Yeah. But <laughs> like, yeah. like, why didn't you say anything like two months ago, man? Like, damn, I've been saying this this whole time. Very, very much so. I actually, I was, um, I was actually talked about, my women friends used to talk about me because I, it was almost like I didn't say nothing. I mm-hmm. wasn't, I wasn't the, uh, the hunter gatherer mm-hmm. so later on at first i was just like i'm just happy to be here <laughs> I'm, really just, I'm, I'm just so happy to be here all right like, taking it this in is, this is way better than where i was way better way better way better yeah talk about, yeah the pins up energy for four years it's yeah crazy yeah, yeah. um yeah. so i hear you but yeah i mean to the um it was yeah so coming from that to you know for you doing the freshman week and I was like dang they really turned everything into a party it was literally an intermission during the art show or like the showcase they do with the DJ you started playing and like it was intermission and people were standing up in the chairs like dancing like this is incredible and, and, and you got so lucky because it was the perfect amount of like recklessness but also like fun so um hold on one second oh yeah man for sure um yeah man pals pals made it possible for everything to to happen in a turn-up fashion for me like Mm -hmm. i already had like coming from la i had the spark you feel me like coming from la you got you got a chip on your shoulder Mm -hmm. and then being coming from an all-boys school it's like everything you do is the meritocracy everything you do is based upon achievement you have Mm -hmm. you have something to prove right right yeah um so like once you had the influx of women and everything else i was just like yeah i'm, I'm here to win I'm, I'm here to stay, but i'm here to win too so, mm-hmm. like, you, like howard is a situation where you don't want to lose right now no and every and everyone is it's interesting because yeah you know loyola is competitive howard like everyone is achieving and it just encourages you to achieve it's not necessarily like a competitive thing it's more of like an affirming like we're all working towards this common goal well it it, it depends there's there's times where well look i'll put it like this if if you want to just come get your degree and go it'll be smooth mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it'll more or less be a breeze for real right right but mm-hmm. if you want to be in like organizations and stuff or if you mm-hmm. want to be the the guy that person the woman the lady that other that you know like it you're gonna run into some some opposition mm-hmm. you're, gonna run, you're gonna run into some uh conflict 
Mm, sure, sure. Yeah. You're going to run into some speed bumps. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we we look at it, especially as Black people, as something that where it's like, we, I, I would rather have it happen between us than have them do it to you out there. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. way, when you're done with it here, you appreciate it all mm-hmm. in one. Mm-hmm. See, I, I never appreciated Loyola competition because it was never, it never came with the affirming. Like it has some affirming qualities, mm-hmm. but it was difficult to be reached on a level where I felt that I was understood. Mm-hmm. Mostly it was because I was black. Right, was right. Plenty of people that made the, made the adjustment to want to understand me and want to have me around and want wanted to understand my people but it, after a while it's just so much that you can do without having some type of black managerial or black um overseeing presence mm-hmm. at the time at loyola we didn't have that particular power yet we had a lot of leverage but we couldn't really do what we wanted mm-hmm. so, yeah i'm sorry i'm talking a lot of loyola a lot of <laughs> power i'm gonna mix yeah. it up I promise, I promise. Oh, sure. I mean, this is where we're at, you know, Loyola grads, Howard grads, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, twice over, twice over, right. and LA guys, so. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I still got to get my degree. I, I did, I went the correct number of years, but I still got to go, go finish up, so look look forward to that soon. I, I am yeah. anticipating going back to do We love it, you know, and yeah, going back and um, you know, and your presence at Howard is, is so clearly felt. So, you know, regardless, um, you know, Thank but um, <laughs> let's see my point, my point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what I love about Loyola, one of the things is it, they, you know, they have a curriculum at least to kind of educate you as a full person. Um, of course, they could. And I love that just like with philosophy, religion, um, things like that. And even like life, of course, we had, um, you know, African American history class. And, you know, I think there could always be more, more, you know, on those in that regard. But, um, you know, perhaps in terms of more of like, the culture of the students and people coming from all over, students coming from all over the the city of this huge city, for the first time interacting with um, people of different cultures. So um, that creates some conflicts and a lot of microaggressions or well, mm-hmm. microaggressions yeah mm-hmm. so um let's see let's see let's see well we've been talking about Loyola I was only going to ask about Howard but I feel like we'll do it about both so yeah, what do you no, love about hey, Loyola and what do you love I, about Howard I, I'm an open book bro light, light me up bro light, <laughs> light me up you got you got it made and um yeah, I, I will do. I will do my absolute best. I have no intentions on lying to you for any reason, but you know, I, I'm. It's your boy. It's hey. your boy. Like the crazy thing is, I forget that we were at Loyola together too. <laughs> right, and it was. Um, it's funny because like I met you. Like I would, I went to, um, middle school or like elementary school, with, like Tyler Adams, Richard Calhoun. So I was like hanging out under them. Um, so I met you through them. And it's just funny because you, I met you on the bench, you know, in front of Loyola Hall and you were playing music. So I was like, yes. that's really crazy out your oh laptop. Oh my God. <laughs> was, was this a uh, summer school or something? Or yeah, was it was like some, some summer school type thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was probably like selling donuts or t-shirts too. I, man, boy, you go, ooh. <laughs> I think senior year, I was president of African American Club, and our T-shirt okay. was the row, bro, row. That's the oh. racist, but you know, like we embraced it. We had our pride, but it was the a picture of the row on a white tee. Man, man, I'll never forget. Wow. That. Mm. Yeah, I love those guys. I I love my tribe. Right, Loyola's sure. bittersweet, but the the love is there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right i feel it yeah um you okay somebody 
Oh, you, you can hear that? that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my roommate, he lifts weights, <laughs> so oh, you can oh. hear him. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh. I was like, "Is Bro taking a shit? Is he okay?" Like, because I see your face too, and you you like trying to hide it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's not making the noise. Oh <laughs> uh, no, <nah. laughs> Dang, that's wild. Yeah, he um. Uh, uh. <laughs> So yeah, for the the listeners, yeah, we have a uh, yeah. A weight lifter in the background. Okay, hey, don't worry, we don't have that in post production. <laughs> editing, editing, editing. Right, you know, health as well. Then, um, <laughs> let me see. Yeah, so what do you love? You know about well, you love uh, Howard. You know, it runs deep. You're devoted to Howard. So you know, tell me about you know just that that devotion and love. You know, um, I really am indebted to the school for allowing space for me to find out who I am and who I can be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I also appreciate the allocation of space to find out who I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm, Right. Howard is so special because it's, if you want to make it about place, you can make it about place. If you want to make it about people, you can make it about people. But it's energy. It's Mm -hmm. energy. It's a spirit. That's what it is. It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit. Like Mm -hmm. when people talk about the ancestors and all that, like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like we got double, triple, quadruple, like, I feel like when you're a black person and you're growing up, you're just going through life trying to collect as many ancestors as you can. <laughs> and yeah, like yeah. going to Howard is like the platinum American Express card of ancestors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I have unlimited ancestors. Like yeah. I can call mm-hmm. upon Richard Smallwood. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, in my mind, I can't really call him. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, I think I'm Richard Smallwood. <laughs> Like, I I think I'm puffy. I think I'm whoever. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's what we could. It's it's a spirit. It's a spirit. I I mm-hmm. love the spirit. The yeah. spirit doesn't die. I've seen I've seen bad days. I've seen good days, and the reaction is the same. Mm-hmm. Let's get the work done. Let's party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's, get the work done, let's party. Play hard. Party hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely. Not even, it's not even a party. It's really a, just a celebration. Like. We we've made work parties. Right, we've right. made social justice into a party. Like we've mm-hmm. made it popular and fashionable for people to give back or to mm-hmm. to have mm-hmm. gatherings in the name of other people or other things. Like ah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's a, a great way to say it, like a, a celebration that we're all here, a celebration that we're all a part of this great legacy and the celebration of where we're going. Yeah. yeah very much so. Mm-hmm. Very much so. So yeah. Wow. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you know, the in the mix documentary highlights, you know, an interesting thing about Howard DJs where, you know, you have to, you know, move a crowd from all over America and also internationally. So yeah, what are some things that you know you do to to stay sharp, you know, as a DJ? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I'll tell it to you like this. My favorite thing, <laughs> Twitter. Interesting. Twitter. Twitter. Interesting. Twitter is the best place to understand music quickly. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Not only can you see it, not only can you hear it, but you can see and hear how other people are digesting it, where they're digesting it, how they're digesting it, how quickly, how frequently. Mm -hmm. And you can also, if you're smart, not if you're smart enough, but if you've been paying attention enough, Mm -hmm. you can understand where the bodies are buried, where the skeletons are. Mm -hmm. So if the song is getting too much steam too quickly. He's trying to ignore it, like how how long, but you just can't. You just can't. I, I hope he's buff as hell, boy. 
but yeah, so uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Hilarious. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, you know that's just motivation and uh. I you know. I love it. Um, what well, we was we was talking about something. Damn. Uh, Twitter. All right, yeah, on. Twitter. So Twitter. Twitter allows you to to see everything, hear everything, and to understand everything quickly. And since you're already on it all day, it allows you to also be more engaging with how you represent music. Mm-hmm. Like DJs, we're, we're, we're music representatives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so are you like just looking at what's trending? Are you like searching? Oh, um, ooh. I'm looking at what's trending. I'm looking, I'm looking at the random stuff. I'm looking at things people may have heard for the first time and like mm-hmm. I'm looking for everything every mm-hmm. single thing anything that involves music mm-hmm. I, I will click it look at it and try to digest it mm-hmm. wow interesting for me, music is about the understanding mm-hmm. it's about okay what are we going to do with this song or where did this where does this song go who did this song go to how is it understood mm-hmm. right. Category. once you categorize or once you for some people, playlist for DJ mm-hmm. called crate. So mm-hmm. once you create something, or once you have something in a crate, mm-hmm. after that, it's relatively easy to assess it to a person, a place, a thing, a being. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You know, another thing. You know, <laughs> this is a. Uh, this is good. You know, just another thing is, you know, to your point, you know, DJs are also music historians as well yeah. so is it a how do you you know study music history and is it similar or, or you know that it might spark an idea then you go down a rabbit hole to you know look at where something came from and things like that twitter again is another one but for doing the history it takes more hands-on research so twitter is where i'll start but i'll try not to ever end there because you'll get caught up in too many things that either don't exist or haven't been verified or validated something like that Mm, right that makes sense it's tricky because it's like you want to stay on twitter all day but you can't Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i i do a lot of i'll i'll go from twitter to wikipedia and then from there, it'll allow me to get the structure. Mm-hmm. So like, I'll be able to search an album, see the liner notes, mm-hmm. see everything first. And then I can figure out, okay, this is what I need to be listening to. This is how I understand this artist. Mm-hmm. And then I go like, okay, culturally, who was out around the same time? Mm-hmm. Movies or mm-hmm. personal mm-hmm. things that were going, around, going on at that time that mm-hmm. might influence how people see or perceive this artist. Right. Interesting. Hmm. You know, like Gucci Man is the hottest he's ever been in his entire career. Right. Yeah, that's a fascinating story. But it, yeah. but it only took 20 years. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. But mm-hmm. looking back on it, whoever would have known that, you know, 08 would just be the middle and not the peak. Right. Right. For sure. That's wild. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Man. Hmm. Man, crazy. Um, Oh, books too. Books, you know, like, of course the records, but really mm-hmm. books, um, articles. A lot of the stuff is, it's in oral tradition. It's not in formal documentation. Mm-hmm. So you, you have to go find it between the cracks, but it, it, it exists. Mm, I see, I see. Are there any like documentaries that you might recommend or something? Ooh, too many, mm-hmm. too many. To me, especially now that we're in the Netflix doc, like Netflix generation. Yeah, yeah. So any of like the anything hip hop, anything like, as far as the DJ stuff goes, you have to go, really go, go back to the VHS DVD days. Mm, that's where you. That's where you'll really understand what's going on with this mm-hmm. entire, this entire industry. Because you have to go back to the origins. A lot of people are lucky that they can just start DJing now and not have to care about what happened in the old days and things like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Like we're we're just old enough to have lived through it so we know Yeah, that. yeah. Right, right. So nobody's gonna get mad at them but they'll get they'll get mad at us. So we have to mm-hmm. 
Right, right. <laughs> Man. Um, you know, we've talked about, you know, being from L.A. and also living in D.C., but I think there's an interesting aspect to that as well. You know, how do you think that's kind of influenced you kind of as a person and in your career, kind of this kind of bi-coastal lifestyle? <laughs> gang, political gangbanger. Mm, interesting. <laughs> that's, that's, what it, that's what it is to me. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, it's offense and defense. Mm-hmm. Surface level and underground. You got to play the, the 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 management side and the union side. Mm-hmm. So it allows me to really understand everything. I feel like I've learned more being in DC than I would have being in New York. Mm-hmm. As far as my LA stuff is concerned, because DC really helps you understand the East Coast. Mm-hmm. New York is kind of fake. Like hmm, interesting. almost is like LA. It doesn't seem hmm. real. Hmm. It's only real if you live. Once you hmm. leave, it's not real no more. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. So yeah, DC is 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 more adjusted to a life that other people can relate to or live in or this and that. Hmm. It's more hmm. real life to me. So it's like kind of more grounded in a sense, or or just like yeah, in terms of what people are doing or more grounded but i guess things in la and like new york can just be so big and so much money exactly. behind it it's um, it, it's exacerbated right yeah yeah it's exacerbated mm-hmm. dc chicago things like that that's more realistic mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. but dc is like chicago but with better weather right yeah that's what it seems like yeah less people better weather less space Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. segregation is still the same maybe worse mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah so yeah. it's it's it takes some understanding it really takes yeah. some understanding. Mm. man you know you you've always got some hot takes man what <laughs> what uh, what do you think is the you know the state of music you know right now and, uh, you know right now yeah. i've actually look i'm i'm good with the hot takes but i've i've tried to calm down my recklessness as a recent mm. because I want to transition into being more people facing and being a personality. Uh, and yeah. I know that it's going to be good when I can be a personality and have a personality, but I know that being doing too much, being reckless with it can hurt more than it can help. Mm-hmm. And in a situation that. where black men are already doing too much too often, mm-hmm. it it would behoove us to, you know, have some restraint. Or as mm-hmm. they said in Judas and the Black Messiah, show some discipline, brother. Ah, ah, show, some mm-hmm. discipline. show some discipline. Show some discipline. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, We're killing it getting it he has the setup he's really working it he is i mean he he does the meal prep um he's got the protein powder he's he's in it for the you know the long haul so yeah 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 it sounds like he getting beat right now that's when the workout really (laughs) right but yeah it's i i've appreciated la and DC people. If you understand LA people and you understand DC people, you can understand anybody. Because mm-hmm. ain't nobody harder to understand than, the, than somebody from LA and somebody mm-hmm. from DC. Especially some black people from LA, born right. and raised. Right, right. People from DC, born and raised. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they, they, they are, they do not fold. You understand? Like mm-hmm. in LA, it's, it's this statement we, we got called never give. I mean, they mm-hmm. never give. They mm-hmm. never give. They're never giving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, state of Music right now is microwave. And oh. we used to joke about it being microwave in the early 2000s and things like that. But looking at it now, it really is to the point where you can't sustain a buzz. Mm-hmm. To the point yeah. where you can't even pay to sustain a buzz. Mm-hmm. And you've got to win. You have to have an outright dynamite record. You have to work it half your life, and mm-hmm. you have to have some money behind it. 
Yeah. Right. Which really sucks. Like that driver's license girl did how many billions of streams in one day? You feel me? Oh, like, crazy. Like, hmm. It's yeah. not real. It's not mm-hmm. real. That, that's yeah. that's dark pool money. You know, mm-hmm. that first mm-hmm. week is like, let's get her over the hump. Mm-hmm. Like the TikTok stuff, like it's viral. Yeah, there's things that happen. Yeah. And joined with, with all that work, but it's, it's some of this stuff is is like not a slap in the face, but some of it is really like, come on, mm-hmm. who, who are you? Who are you for? Come on, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. come on, right, man. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, just things that happen behind the scenes. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. It takes all of our analysis, honestly, just mm-hmm. to keep it G, stay honest with it all. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I don't want to hold you up. My fault. Oh no! Good question. Um, let's see. Yeah, you know. Yeah, what are some things about the DJ lifestyle that might not be obvious? You know, that you know might be interesting for people to know. Interesting, good or interesting bad? Hey, I, I got some shit. Hey, either either one, both. You know. Yeah. Um, interesting, good. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting good. The potential for income streams is damn near unlimited. It's unlimited. So as a DJ, you're pretty much like a Swiss Army knife. You can do anything. Mm-hmm. You can perform, you can produce, you can AR, you can manage, you can do anything. Anything dealing with music, a DJ has done it, done it well, and done it to the mastery of any other person in this business. Mm-hmm. Bad thing is there's no pipeline. Mm-hmm. there's no easy navigation if you're if you're a piano player right which mm-hmm. you are now or mm-hmm. we both have been mm-hmm. and you're good enough in high school where do you go to college mm-hmm. to play piano mm-hmm. you can get yeah. a piano degree from damn near everywhere most of these places have music school mm-hmm. not to mention if you're good enough you can actually mm-hmm. go to a music school right right yeah, Julia, yeah. Berkeley mm-hmm. rings a bell yeah yeah so what is the DJ school? Scratch Scratch Academy, mm-hmm. which is what? Barely 10, 15, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, mm-hmm. and what is it really? It's a formal entity, which is really a promotional entity that gives you lessons, but more or less primes you for a career around DJ. Mm-hmm. Are you okay. a real DJ if you don't get a degree from there? like who's to say Mm -hmm. and what does the degree really mean if it doesn't you know like just because you have a degree from scratch academy doesn't mean you're gonna get a job Mm -hmm. i remember i wanted to leave howard to go to scratch academy just to go Mm -hmm. get the thing and come back like yeah and Mm -hmm. i remember thinking to myself like wasting 2500 to go home and Mm -hmm. make that to come Mm -hmm. back to howard just Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it takes it takes a lot of understanding. That's that's what I try to work on now in the DJ game or industry or business is equity, infrastructure, and pipeline. Trying to make it so the people that come behind us can understand what they're doing, where they're going, where they want to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what are some, like, challenging stuff that, you know, people might not know? challenges DJing oftentimes now has been dominated by face cards you understand so you have to look a certain way dress a certain way act a certain way it doesn't matter that you dj a certain way so we have to reinforce skill as a necessary bar and a necessary rubric to separate people like draw is cool or the amount of people you can draw is cool but that doesn't have anything to do with your dj mm, right right <laughs> i i want the djing to be understood as the djing and nothing more nothing less mm-hmm. i want the djs to kind of you know find a way to separate things or to align things in a way that djs can understand from a dj perspective rather than having to align themselves to what customers, clients, and people that have never DJed or will never DJ 
think about DJing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are the essential things a DJ just starting out should do to be successful? The essential things a DJ just starting out should do? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Practice. That's number one. Mm -hmm. You'll get nowhere without practicing. Mm -hmm. Even if you're good. Mm -hmm. If you don't practice, it's almost like throwing everything away. Man. Mm -hmm. Practice. Listen. Mm -hmm. So a DJ can never grow if he doesn't understand what he's growing into or where he's going. If you're listening to somebody do the wrong thing all the time, you're going to do the wrong thing because that's all you listen to. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, do your research, practice, listen, and understand. And when you say listen and do research, are you saying listen to, like, people before you, listen to the crowd, um, listen to, like, what's popular? Everything. This is probably before you'll even get to a crowd, but mm -hmm. you, you need to listen to the people that came before you, the people that inspired you to do this job because it wasn't just you alone. Mm -hmm. go, go to the origin points of your inspiration and find out how the game treats them. You understand? Mm -hmm. I remember having a lot of DJ heroes that I personally do not care for anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. man happens no care, no care for them mm. so yeah Ris listen practice do research understand mm -hmm. yeah um you know you spent i think about a year as you know nipsey hustles dj yeah a little over a year and yeah so how did that come about and what are some takeaways you got from that experience Man, a wonderful experience pretty much helped help give some input to the catalyst that brought us Crenshaw and everything else. Um, it helped me learn the ins and outs of the industry, get everything in writing, mm -hmm. assume nothing, mm -hmm. ask everything. Mm -hmm. um, speak when spoken to there's a lot of times where i just thought things were more comfortable than what they were and i just mm -hmm. was not familiar mm -hmm. so i mean rest in peace nip of course but that was just mm -hmm. a really great experience mm -hmm. um especially for me because i'm i'm from the area ladera heights is right. you know it it crosses it's adjacent to uh slauson app not to mention mm -hmm. being next to the Hyde Park area, mm -hmm. Overhill, everything else. So I was more than familiar. Like I, I was there at his first show at Howard. Oh, wow. we have a picture okay. together and everything, and he mm -hmm. remembered me from that show. Oh, wow. So, yeah, like I, I we've been new. We, we, mm -hmm. we, we've been new, and I, um, I was just really appreciative of of that. Mm -hmm. that um, I learned a lot about being a man too. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can learn a lot just being around. You don't have to ask or listen. You just just pay attention. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot by what he did right and by a lot of his mistakes. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I see. What have been some other you know highlights during your career? Ooh, DJ for Obama, Obama oh, for Kendrick. Oh. Hey, oh. Four, wow. five, six, seven Howard homecomings in a row. <laughs> uh, man. I, I've got too many. Oh, yeah. Know. The 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 house DJ for Howard Theater. Man. Oh no, dog. It's, I, I've been on Apple Music. I almost did Sway in the morning last year. Ah, uh, crazy. My stuff still <laughs> go, my my stuff is still going. Yeah, Life is still progressing for me, so mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out a way to get off of life life support during the pandemic. Right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of artists are going through this same situation where 
you feel not necessarily lost uh, or trapped, you just feel like feel like your world is kind of shut down or your hmm. world is kind of collapsed a little bit. Mm-hmm. For so sure. You, you want to make sure that you get your mental together first mm-hmm. and then you go get your career. Because mm-hmm. for a lot of these people, they just try not to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep it being with you. A lot of my artist friends, friends that can't perform or friends that can't do this and that right now, mm-hmm. they're just trying to stay alive. Right. It's back to the old days. And because mm-hmm. they come from a background, thankfully, to where they're used to having to survive or get to it, they're not, this is an unfamiliar feeling. But this mm-hmm. isn't a feeling that I would wish on my worst enemy. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when, yeah, the basis of, you know, income is based off of, yeah, live events and, mm-hmm. you know, gatherings and they're not happening. Yeah. And won't happen for a while. Right. Hey. Mm. Um, it's interesting, you know, a lot of DJs were on IG Live and then it seems like a lot of them transitioned to, to Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, Twitch is the one because, all right, look, so IG Live fucked up. Mm-hmm. I've pretty much it's nothing else other to say other than that I do I really fucked up they really could have had everybody already on the platform right the yeah. platform mm-hmm. for the greater good all they had to do was find out a way to get the songs to register so the DJs or the entities wouldn't be getting these DMCA violations yeah yeah mm-hmm. so for me and I'm sure for plenty of others, once the Twitch scenario came into play, it was over. We mm-hmm. didn't even know they were getting that much money over there. Mm-hmm. Like the gamers are getting a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And the DJs probably are getting close, almost close to it, almost close to that same amount now. Mm-hmm. It's really crazy because it's like, This is this is the perfect vehicle. It's just at a terrible time. It's at a great time because you know we don't have nothing else. But it's like, man, if this was going beforehand and we all mm-hmm. got to introduce ourselves to it in the right way beforehand, right. we could have mm-hmm. won. We could have really mm-hmm. won. Right, but right. Now it's kind of marginalizing things like only the super popular, or super visible. Mm. or super consistent can can do it which is like any other platform but it's like damn i wish i really wish ig live would have figured it out like we yeah. was all there and people yeah. already know how to use the platform and everything mm-hmm. right. yeah mm-hmm. but i like twitch i like the app on the tv and everything i i, I like it so mm-hmm. i can't be mad at it um yeah so you just released you know twerk tape nine you know success yeah. and um yeah, you mentioned, you know, considering, you know, having the tenth one. Um, you're streaming on Twitch. What are you know you working on now? And things coming down the pipe, you know, inside and outside of music, you know, that are important. Uh, I will. I'm gonna do eight and ten because I crossed. I I skipped over eight so I could go straight to the women's stuff. But mm. I wanted to kind of draw people in so that they felt like they can anticipate more from me. So I want to do eight and 10. Eight is going to be all the two years of stuff that I missed when I wasn't putting tapes out. And 10 Mm. is going to be an introduction to all these new and viral songs so Mm. people can kind of get to know them on a playlist and song type basis. Mm. Right Mm. now, a lot of people just know it as, oh, that's that TikTok song or that's that song. That's the, you feel me? Like that's that's the that song. (laughs) Go with this dance or this and that. Mm-hmm. So me, what a good DJ does, he puts a face to the name. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna mm-hmm. be that's my little job with these next couple of tapes. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I have a project I'm working on with a company called Breaker, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna do a Twitch show where we break different artists once a month. Oh, interesting. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have my own little creative production studio going. This is what I'm in right now. This is Chubby Studios, but. Hey. I also have a little situation going to where I want to develop other DJs and me personally, I'm going to 
start teaching more DJs from my house for free. I want to de- like start teaching kids. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like I used to work at um, I used to be at Just Rock. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh man, yeah, they're I, awesome. I had to leave for a second because um, what's what's the director's name? She's really nice. Too. Yeah, Shalita. Shalita White. Shalita. Yeah. Shalita. <laughs> And she has, what, a Houston area code or something like that? Yeah, she's from Houston. They just opened up a Houston location. Yeah. So. I'm so happy for that sister, man. Because mm-hmm. she yes, was, indeed. like, she was still trying to put it together. And then I, I had to go back to DJing. Mm-hmm. I had, um, when we were working together, like, it was it was at a rough point for me. I was kind of, like, in between jobs and everything else. And mm-hmm. I, I was hot on the DJing, but I didn't want to stop doing what I was doing to go get another formal job so she really mm-hmm. helped out a lot and i mm-hmm. want to give a shout out to her too so mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah she's just always providing opportunities for people and she's really collaborative that's awesome yeah. and she knows how to make it work especially for musicians because it's often hard to make it work mm-hmm. for musicians so mm-hmm. like the flexibility of mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, okay, yeah. So you were saying about you know Chubby Studios and oh yeah, yeah. Chubby Studios. I'm, I'm putting together uh, everything here. It's pretty much gonna be DJing here, production on this side. That side over there is gonna be podcast tape. So anything you oh. can do it all in my house, twenty four seven. Wow. Once I finally move is when I'll really get to put together the studio the way I want. Mm-hmm. Right now it's, it's in its infantile beginning stages i'll have an article out about it before the week is over oh okay um, i was in scallywag mag and i was kind of mm-hmm. playing with putting it out for so long so now i'll finally be able to do that oh, okay well yeah i'll be looking out for that you want the exclusive exclusive hey. that clip right there awesome all right exclusive Sweet. awesome um yeah anything else you want the people to know um Yes. Yes, actually. I had a, a great Howard starter jacket on because, you know, I love Howard and I love starter. Um, I've worked for both, but I have another, I have a Juneteenth shirt on and oh. I believe it has this quote on the back that says, none of us can be free until all of us are free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, if, if I'm going to leave on anything, that's what I'm going to leave on. Mm-hmm. Um, all of this DJing stuff, this is my freedom. Mm-hmm. This is how I am able to escape. Mm-hmm. But I understand for everybody that might not be the case. Mm-hmm. And for some people, they're just trying to find freedom of the mind, freedom of the spirit, freedom to exist. Mm-hmm. So for Black people, for all people, anybody, everybody, go find freedom Mm -hmm. however you choose to want it i love it i love it so where can people you know keep up with you all my links are hot so everything dj chubby swag any platform dj c-h-u-b-b-e swag with two g's catch me there Website should be back up. If not, it's going to have a really nice landing page with all my links on there. Check me out, man. Check me out. Yes. Well, thank you so much again, man, bro. And thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And you know, Mm -hmm. I love you 100% like a brother. For sure, man. Yeah, I love you too, bro. Yeah. Yeah.